elections concerned Nigerians advocate intense voters' education. Former Governor Goswami Lapabi meets APC delegates in Koshiva State ahead of APC's national convention. As Senator representing Cross River Central emerges PDP Governoral Flag Bearer in Cross River State. Plus, Top Fed University holds maiden matriculation resolved to foster academic excellence. Details of this and more in just a moment. A very good evening and welcome to MTA Calabar News at 7. I am Maureen Liu and join now the news in detail. The state governor, Professor Ben Ayade, has approved the elevation of Bison Peter Sunday and Iwara Innocent from the rank of directors to permanent secretaries in the state civil service. A government statement by the head of state, Timothy Alban Akwaji, indicates that the elevation is with immediate effect. The APC governorship primary to elect a governorship club bearer for the APC platform ahead of the 2023 general election is ongoing now. Let's join correspondent Paul Abel at the UJ Student Stadium live on Situation Report. Studio, we are right now at the UJ Swene Stadium, Calabar, the venue for the APC governorship primaries here in Cross River State. The delegates earlier in the day in three different locations of the Senatorial District North, South, as well as Central had undergone the accreditation and uh, they are trickling in, they are coming in for the voting proper to commence. And we are hopeful that with the presence of the governor here, Professor Ben Ayade, and all other dignitaries, guests who are supposed to officiate this event, the program will start in earnest. But before now, the governor has already told us that a consensus, consensus candidate is what the party is working towards to. And Prince Otu was chosen after a meeting with most of the aspirants, except two who later one of them have agreed to join in the consensus candidate. So we are watching how things will flow here at the UJ Swene Stadium, the venue for the APC governorship primaries here in Cobra River State. We will give you updates as the program unfolds. From the UJ Swene Stadium, it's back to you in the studio. Thank you, Paul. And in a similar vein, the People's Democratic Party PDP governorship primary has been concluded with incumbent Senator Sandy Ono emerging as a party's candidate for the 2023 gubernatorial election. Correspondent with the Alenio reports that the senator defeated other aspirants with 236 number of votes. Announcing the results, chairman of the Congress, Babajide Koka, says the election was hitch free and credible. The winner expressed appreciation to the, uh, for the honor done him and promised to carry other aspirants who contested the day alone. And ahead of the 2023 general elections, two governorship candidates, Ladi Adebutu and Shegun Soumi, have emerged from the parallel primaries of the People's Democratic Party in Open State. Lekon Agbonde tells us more. Two factions of the People's Democratic Party chose different venues in Abekuta Metropolis for the governorship primaries to elect party's flag bearer for the 2023 general elections in Ogun State. At the end of the parallel primaries, a five-man electoral committee from the PDP National Headquarters, led by Professor Akase Sorka, announced former federal lawmaker Raymond North's constituency House of Representatives Ladia Debutu, who polled 714 votes as winner of the primary, while other two aspirants, Jimmy Lawal and Shegun Shoumi, had zero votes. <laughs> Another faction at the end of its primary conducted by the chairman electoral committee of the PDP governorship primary in Ogun State, Abayomi Daniel, produced Shegun Shomi with 554 votes to defeat his closest rival, Jimmy Lawal, who scored 30 votes, while Ladia Debutu pulled 15 votes. The 
the two candidates were expressing gratitude to the delegates called for unity among party members for the success of the party in the 2023 general elections. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agbonde, NTA News. Also, the emergence of more and all, as the man who flies the governorship flag of the People's Democratic Party in Aquarium State in the 2023 general election, has finally ended the long wait. Let's now join Susan Asikwa for a moment. 1,018 delegates drawn from the 31 local government areas of the state were eligible to vote at the Nest of Champions, also known as the Gotsula Pavio International Stadium, venue of the primaries. Aside from Akanokun, Senator Basi Albert and Onofiok Luke had earlier in a press statement indicated their withdrawal from the exercise, citing a pending issue in court as reason. With the election committee led by the deputy governor of Edo State, Philip Schreibel, accreditation of delegates and voting took place simultaneously and eventually, Pasomo Basi Eno, having polled 993 votes, was declared winner by the chairman of the election committee. And the winner is Mr. Eno Umo Basi. I want to assure you all that you have made the right choice. And I have no sacrifice this choice and faith you have reposed in me. Governor Udom Emmanuel appreciates INEC, security officials, as well as party officials for his successful conduct of the process, assuring that this light of peace, growth and development will continue to shine brighter in the state. And offer you a chance that we should work together, that one person must be a governor, but so many people must make a government. So let's join those to make a government while one person becomes a governor. High point of the event was presentation of certificate of nomination to the winner, Pastor Moaba Sieno. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTA News. Similarly, the race to Asurok is gathering momentum as more aspirants are consulting to be number one citizens of the country. The latest is the immediate past minister of large daughter affairs and former governor of Kwaiyum State, Godswill Akpabio, who presented himself to the Cross River State APC delegates ahead of the party's national convention slated for Monday, 30th of May 2022, or the Alendo. Tell us more. The presidential aspirant was received by the state executives and other APC stalwarts in Calabar, where he addressed delegates on his presidential ambition. The presidential hopeful was optimistic that as an uncommon transformer, his mission is to transform the economy, infrastructure and security architecture of the country. Goswil Akpabio emphasized that the unity of the country cannot be compromised. Hence, unity, justice, equity and harmony among the citizenry will be his top priority. We will also ensure that we utilize the weapon that I did by making sure that both the Muslims and the Christians engage in continual prayers for this country. We must pray for the leadership of this country, and we must pray for our children, and pray for Nigeria. And then I also say Nigeria must also show love to one another, like we have always done. I will show it by example. I assure you that given the opportunity, I will serve this country with love, unite the country, and tackle the infrastructural deficit, the economic situation, the natural integration problem, and also tackle the problem of insecurity. So I'm accepted everywhere I go to. He urged the APC delegate from Cross River State to look inward and envision by the path they play in stretching their hands with his to strive a veritable change for a resourceful future of the country. In Calabar, Ode Alenyo, NTA News. And to further promote the nation's democratic system ahead of 2023 general elections, concerned Nigerians are advocating intense voters' education to provide citizens with requisite information and electoral provisions to reduce voters' apathy. Udra Etim tells us more. Voter education has to do with providing citizens with basic information about their participation in elections. It aims to acquaint the electorate with the basic concepts of democracy, thereby encouraging them to vote and make informed decisions during the elections. With the newly introduced technologies by INIC, such as voter enrollment device, online registration and other innovation, the need to educate citizens and supporters of political parties, 
stakeholders say is apt, especially as 2023 general elections draw near. It is absolutely imperative or important that uh, INEC will embark on aggressive voters' education, you know, especially in the rural communities. They can engage the teachers in primary and secondary schools you know, to help them because I know that they do not have the necessary uh, capacity or resources to do this exclusively. INEC may not be able to go all out into the new concerns of the communities. That's why they need to engage some stakeholders like faith-based organizations, churches, mosques, and even town criers to get to the root of the basic uh, foundation where the citizens, mostly in the rural areas, can be found. For others, proper enlightenment on the entire electoral process will increase voter turnout and encourage participation during elections. issue of this online registration, a lot of Nigerians are not... Uh, online, most especially the farmers, the Okada riders. So what you need to do is to take the registration back to the various wards for them to register. Those pooling units, most especially the newly created pooling unit. They, however, advocated for massive voter education by civil society and political parties to help citizens to promote democratic values in the country. In Calabar, Uduak Etam. NTA News. You are still watching NTA Calabar News. You can as well watch this newscast on our YouTube channel at YouTube slash NTA Calabar. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> University has resolved to foster academic excellence through the development of students' mental, cognitive, social, and physical capacity to promote excellence in their future endeavors. Chairman Board of Trustees of the institution, Dr. Emmanuel Abraham, stated this in an address at the first matriculation ceremony of the university in Nkapta Akwaibom State. Justina Etim was there for NTA News and now reports. It is yet another feat in the annals of Nigeria education as Top Faith University matriculates 104 students for the 2021-2022 academic session. With cutting-edge facilities and qualified teachers, Chairman, Board of Trustees, Dr. Emmanuel Abraham believes the university is positioned to discover, develop, and deploy the potentials of learners to ensure they become economically productive in the future. Everyone sitting here have responded to our call. They have responded to the imperatives of total quality education. They have responded to the philosophy of a 3D that is being popularized by us. We will let these students discover who and what they are will help them to develop it and will help them to think of how to deploy. D1 is discovery. D2 is development. D3 is deployment. And that makes the total man. Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Patrick Ebewu, implored the students to develop self confidence, positive thinking, and time management to excel in their academic pursuits. For you to cope, with the demands of the digital age, my dear students, self-management is very essential in our lives. Remember, John Maxwell once said, foolish people want to conquer the world, but the wise ones want to conquer themselves. Students, plan your life well. Be determined and committed to your course of study. After the speeches, the matriculants are administered the oath of allegiance. That I will 
To the best of my ability. Pursue seriously. My course of studies. In top grade university. The ceremony culminated in the installation of the paramount ruler of Ona local government's area, His Royal Majesty Edidem Raymond Inyang, as the pioneer chancellor of Top Faith University. He appreciates the gesture. I, Raymond Timothy Inyang, do hereby accept this honor Earlier, the Akwaibom State Governor, represented by his deputy Moses Ekbu, inaugurated the Udom Emmanuel Mass House, Faculty of Management and Social Sciences. The Udom Emmanuel Accounting Laboratory, while an Iroku tree was planted with a plaque unveiled in commemoration of Top Faith Group of Institutions anniversary. It was indeed a glorious moment. Justina Etam, NTA News. And moving on, the Supreme Court has dropped out the application of all progressives grand alliance to be a joiner. In the case of President Muhammad Buhari versus the National Assembly and others seeking the deletion of Section 84, Subsection 12 from the Electoral Act 2022. The seven man panel of justices headed by Justice Muhammad Musa Jitijo gave the ruling today in Abuja. The Apex Court decision is due to the withdrawal of the application of ACGA through the, its counsel, Charles Ahun. The court has also granted the application of the Nigerian Bar Association to be an amicus curiae in the matter. As an amicus curiae, meaning the friend of the court, the MBA will be assisting the court in furnishing it with issues regarding the questions of law or facts. The National Assembly, as the first defendant in the matter, through its counsel, Kayode Ajolu, has also raised a preliminary objection to the matter. The National Assembly is challenging the jurisdiction of the court to be the trial court in the matter. And to health matters, the federal government is keeping surveillance across all the borders against any possible outbreak of monkeypox. This is coming as cases were recorded in neighboring countries. Musa Aliyu has more. The recent epidemiological investigation linked to the outbreak of monkeypox to cross-border travels. In Nigeria, officially, we have not detected any. With the outbreak of the virus in neighboring countries, Nigeria is intensifying surveillance at all high entry points. The surveillance will also cut across animal population at the point of entry as well as at the wet market. Minister of Agriculture Mohamed Mahmoud Abubakar speaks further on measures against the zoonotic disease. The general public is hereby advised to avoid contact with animals that could harbor the virus, including animals that are sick or found dead where monkeypox occurs. Avoid contact with any material such as bedding that has been in contact with a sick animal. The government assured the general public and the international community of our resolve to continue to collaborate with relevant sectors and stakeholders in prompt containment of the disease in the event of an outbreak in the country. Musa Aliyu. NTA News. Now, associations, unions, core members, and individuals in the formal and informal sectors are now eligible to enroll on the National Health Insurance Scheme. This enlightenment was brought to the fore at the stakeholders' meeting organized by the National Health Insurance Scheme at Biden State. Scarlett and Samuel reports. Since the establishment of National Health Insurance Scheme, now an agency in 2004, about 18 years after, not many Nigerians are abreast with its functions, services, and how to assess them. This calls for an interactive meeting with the stakeholders where various issues were raised and answers provided to enhance the smooth operation of the agency. NHIs has come to stay. We encourage everyone, all stakeholders, to keep our breath and make it work. It's going to help us 
because I've aired my uh, grievances and I, it has been handled very well. So I'm happy. For this. It has been so interesting and so educative and so beneficial, especially for most of us who want to be very, very much committed to this program. And to the organizers were satisfied with the outcome of the meeting as they assure participants that all issues raised will be addressed. The interaction is meant to bring out what are the challenges. Then once we hear the challenges, we prefer solution. All it be to ensure that our enrollees enjoy quality air care services and when they go to the facility, they are attended to on time. After now, the rate of complaints would have reduced. And that's a way to at least to assess the impact of what we have done. In the course of the meeting, new packages of the scheme, such as social health insurance for individuals, group, association, formal and informal sector, designed to ensure access to quality and affordable care to all Nigerians and how to tap into them were introduced. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. More than 4,000 defaulting mineral title holders have been identified by the Ministry of Mines and State Development and failure to meet the necessary requirements will lead to a revocation of such titles. We have published 4, 000, over 4,000 mineral title holders that are defaulting. What is the essence? We talk of use it or lose it because we don't want you to collect a license depriving other investors to come to take advantage of that area. And you put it inside your drawer. For years, people come, you are not using it. You can even decide you are paying that, you are paying the statutory fees, the obligations. But that is not enough. Not working itself is equally uh, uh, contradicts, contravenes the provisions of the Act. We equally tell you, why are you, not, why are you dormant? So we give you 30 days to answer that. So dormant uh, activities, non-payment, such things can, you can get a revocation for that. Director General of the Mining Cadastro Office, Simon Nkom, stated this at the press briefing in Abuja. In line with the federal government policy is of doing business, six zonal offices of the agency have been created while applications for mineral titles are now done online. Anywhere we go for conferences, people will ask these questions. Does it mean now that I must come to Nigeria to submit an application? Must I come to Nigeria to be able to now make inquiry or look at your system? So that is the essence in collaboration with the World Bank. We've been able to now migrate the system to online, automated, and real time. That's it on the news. Many thanks for watching. You have a good night. Mm-hmm.